Hello dudes, welcome back to the channel. It's me, CJ. We are going to be doing the April wrap up. This is my favorite pen, by the way. The Muji 0.5 pen, it's a good one. I read Monarch by Candace Wool, out by Soft School. This is a new release, 2022 release. It's about a young girl who is a former teen beauty queen who discovers that she is a plant in a government-based deep state underworld. <laughs> her life, her existence, her family structure are essentially all a big experiment, kind of like the movie Hannah, okay? Have that be your context. It's also set in the late 90s and touches a lot on the cultural obsession with beauty queens at the time. See John Benet Ramsey. Also kind of cultural fascination with the deaths of beauty, beauty queens, girls, young girls going missing, kind of all of the pop culture following that really got its legs and captured much of the public's attention in the 90s. I really enjoyed my time reading this book. It is weird. It is absolutely a Marmite book. It's love or hate it. But it was so out there that it worked for me, which I find is the case for a lot of soft skull releases. The main character is really distanced from herself. She kind of feels detached and questions a lot of her own memories, can't really place herself in either her familiar structure, familial structure or um, within her own wants and desires as well. I think this book is doing a lot of things. Talking about the idea of the self and identity, especially as it relates to what you inherit, inherit from your familial structure, what culturally, what cultural signifiers tell you those things should reflect and be like, and also how the people around you form how you view yourself. I've never read a book like this before. It's written by a poet, so the language is really precise and cutting and kind of hypnotizing at times. It also has like this 90s femme, weird like riot girl energy going on. Our, our monarch main character has the ability to like shape shift and turn into other people and plug into different like identities and personality types and abilities at will they discover. I would say go into this one with little context. It's it's really hard for me to talk about. I'm finding this to be pretty difficult. Any of that sounds good and like me blurbing it as the experience of being a woman is like being in a deep state trance where you never really know if you have access to like all of the parts of yourselves. Sounds interesting. I think you should read this. It's definitely pretty singular and you'll have fun. And I think you'll have fun and like get something fresh from it, which I've definitely walked away feeling like that. Ooh, what does this book feel like? This book feels like empty college dorms, not to be too on the nose, but like a monarch butterfly fleeting away, applying a frosty light pink lipstick and queer longing. Okay, and then I read Mona, which is another recent release out by, who published this? I wanna say Knopf, is that right? Who published this? Nope, FSG, out by FSG. This follows a young woman of color who is a writer. She's attending a literary festival. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about this, Mona and Monarch are kind of in conversation with each other because one of the big themes in Mona is she has like these tactile feelings and memories in her body that she keeps kind of having like sense memory flashbacks to throughout her time at the literary festival that she can't access. So I think both of these books deal with femme women not having access to trauma, like live trauma and the ability for the body and the brain to rewire and skip and gloss over parts of ourselves that are hard to access. But anyway, Mona follows a, a Peruvian writer who is attending a writer's workshop in LA. Nope, a writer's workshop in Scandinavia. She, again, is kind of snarky and is met with like the weirdest intellectual grouping of writers that you can imagine who are also attending this literary festival. It's very tongue in cheek. She's very much so poking fun at 
kind of the who's who of the literary community and these archetypes of people who are there, right? She kind of views herself as like an like a curiosity. She's she's understanding that the literary community is monetizing and quantifying her otherness through her being a woman of color. So she is kind of recognizing that framework and applying it to all of the other uh, writers who are attending this literary conference as well. So that's interesting, just like her categorizing and othering other participants who, who are there for other reasons because they're part of marginalized communities, right? She gets into some sticky situations with men at said literary conference and I had a weird I had a pretty weird reading experience with this book. I would say like 75% through. I was like, I don't know, like it's not landing for me. It's not saying anything new. It was very much so giving that Rachel Cusk book about where she's at the literary conference, but kind of with this different element of identity wrapped into it. But the last 25% of this book, the stakes are raised. Her sense memory is coming back to her. She has access to kind of this like undercurrent of trauma that exists throughout the plot which she tries to brush off all the time right like the lived trauma of being a brown woman like different physical alter altercations she's found herself just general violence that she's found herself in before all of that is rising and has really high stakes at the end and the novel in tone gets fantastical which I don't think is gonna be for everyone but for me it was like really moving <laughs> It was a, a really interesting way to end this book and kind of have her have like the submerging feeling. Oh. Hi, I'm filming a video. Oh. And kind of having the submerging the submerging feeling of like what it feels like to be a wash of all of those emotions and being close contact with them again. Wow, what does this book feel like? Taking a Xanax before a long haul flight seeing people you know in a sauna environment naked and applying red lipstick as armor and i read paul takes the form of a mortal mortal <laughs> paul takes the form of a mortal girl by andrea lawyer this follows a person named paul in the 90s who is kind of adrift in a college town environment they have a best friend in this city they have a job they're overall just kind of cruising through their life, right? Paul has the ability to bend their gender identity and expression and their physical body at will. And he, I, yeah, Paul has he pronouns in this whole book regardless of what their gender expression is. Paul then starts utilizing this ability to shapeshift and really explores like every crevice of queer culture at the time like he's a leather daddy he goes to like an all women's lesbian music festival he can like conform how mask or femme he's looking as a gay man at any minute uh talks about talks about like what he needed to switch in his body to be a top or a bottom at anything that you can imagine of like all of these different subsects of queer culture is explored by him literally shape-shifting and being able to dip in and out of them. I liked this book. I thought it was fun and really gay and really uh, sexual for sure. Like it's definitely a romp. I would say like after all walking away from it, it didn't leave me with anything and it's not trying to either, which I liked about it. It's not trying to say anything political about gender expression or identity. It's just like really having fun with bouncing in between all of those lived experiences. And I don't know, I think if you're, you're queer, you should read it because I think it's fun and gives you like a different access point to maybe a subsex that you're not in into currently yourself and kind of just as like a daydream about what if you could shift your body at will which i think is fun to think about but overall it's like whatever to me a romp though oh what does this book feel like okay this book feels like denim shorter alls 
So overalls that are cut into short off shorts, cut off shorts, bike messenger bags, and like being so drunk at night when you're walking home by yourself and you know you're in a precarious situation, but you're not afraid because you're so inebriated. Okay, and then I read A Manual for Cleaning Women by Lucia Berlin. My friend CJ sent this to me for my birthday. Thank you again. Collection of short stories, very much so autobiographical, inspired by her own life. She herself, as a human, had a very interesting life, like was born in Alaska. Her family uh, then moved to a mining town. Then they went to South America. Her sister lived in Mexico. She was addled with drug addiction and alcoholism throughout most of her life. She had very intense strong connections to a couple of different men who she ended up marrying um who were like all different kinds of weird characters she was originally from uh has has a lot of family in like a small texan town next to the border just a very large colorful life right so the stories draw from draw from that experience and they all are so good <laughs> <laughs> I think we learned in a previous video that the way you say this word is posthumously. So this collection was covered, this collection was published posthumously after her death. Um, and I don't think she really got the praise that she deserved uh, while she was alive. And even though, I would say like, even though this collection hits on a lot of the same tones over and over again, like there's repetition throughout. You can kind of see the motifs and recurring characters that she brings back to life uh several times like there's i don't know probably like four or five stories about her sister but nothing ever feels rehashed it all feels fresh every single time and if anything you get more context for who who these characters are and like these little glimpses of their life and you you appreciate them coming back if that makes sense at all i loved it it was like messy vagabond people on the edge just like dirty gritty Americana, which I think is like so gross if people fake it, but she was not faking it at all. That shit was real, it was good. Specifically, I would say the story that has stuck with me the most was the one about the Texan mother going to Mexico to have an abortion um, with her cousin and deciding not to have an abortion. It was so good so memorable I just like love depictions that are done well of these kind of like weird on the margins people because it reminds me so much of people i've been around growing up and people in my own family and i i love when they're they're fully realized and formed and not judged on a page it's really fun to read about this book felt like a gas station at night smoking a cigarette down until the filter and neon signs yeah neon signs okay controversial time i also read the swimmers by julia atsuka i was excited to read this a lot of my friends had read it and i also listened to tracy from the stacks podcast interview the author and it was a pretty good interview so i was like okay i'm gonna get around to this i'm dead inside so just like take that as a caveat you might like this if you're not dead inside the synopsis of the novel is essentially it's a novel in two parts. The first part follows the life of this communal pool, uh, kind of the habitual users of it, little glimpses of them as people, like really detailed, interesting writing about pool management, like lost items in the pool, people's different routines, pool etiquette. It felt really like a writing exercise about how much information and depth you could pull out from this like communal spaces daily experience like uh trying to trying to really encapture like the lived the lived experience of a community pool right and it was all told in what person is that second person like the we voice which I think I've discovered I don't like <laughs> after reading this book. So that's the first book, right? The second book tells, the second book dives into the tale of Alice, who is one of members of said pool. She is experiencing memory loss and dementia and she, and the second half of the book is all about that experience from early onset of symptoms up until when she passes away in the care home. And it was kind of like 
it was like kind of the same structure. It was that entire A to Z linear writing exercise of what that could be like for someone. Um, I think it's done with like a lot of compassion. I think Alice's story is one of the, the luckier experiences of, of that um, disease that I know affects a lot of people. But like she had family that cared for her even though they they didn't show up as much as they wanted to. Her facility seemed pretty nice and the caretakers that were taking care of her. All in all, it seemed like a, a cushy middle class version of what memory loss and end of life care looks like. And it was like, pretty and well written and like sad but i don't think it really spoke to me in any certain way or will stick with me again this whole book felt like two writing exercises made into a book this is my first julia atsuka i've read though i know a lot of people like the buddha in the attic so i don't think i'm gonna read that though because i really don't like the you we voice not my fave. For all the books I officially read in May, uh, I am reading right now Revenge of the Scapegoat by Karen Berlin. I think it's kind of DWM vibes. It was blurbed by Catherine Lacey, who I really liked both of her books. So I'm excited to get into that. And then I'm also reading a collection of short stories, which was blurbed by Sally Rooney called Reward System. And it's out by Jem Calder. Stadiana cover uh, out by FSG in July. So that's an upcoming release that I'm reading on my Kindle. It is a slim collection of short stories. I think there's only five. I read the first one yesterday and it was like a hundred pages long, <laughs> which I don't think I've ever experienced that before. Um, it follows a young woman chef who's working her way up through the ranks of like a hot cuisine restaurant and what it's like to find a partner there and just like kind of be a young woman. It was giving Rooney vibes for sure. I wonder if Jem Calder is an Irish writer. I should Google that. I'm excited to read the rest. I think it's like ultra contemporary relationship based short stories, little slice of life stuff. Some Rooney, some Rooney vibes for sure. Tell me what you've been reading. What are you reading this month? I have a couple of like planned books that I need to read this month. Uh, one is I'm going to reread Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman, which is a, a new release because Jalen and I are going to be talking about it on his podcast in late May. So I want to refresh my brain for that because it's been a few months since I read it. I think I read it last year. Uh, and then I want to read Don't Say We Didn't Warn You by Ariel Delgado Dixon because the Sunny's first book club is in June. So I want to be prepared for that as well. So a little bit of my reading is already prescribed. Um, let me know if there's any other cool read-alongs or anything happening. I always am out of the loop, but could be in the loop. Okay, love you guys. It's Sunday, back to work we go. Goodbye.